It's time to talk about inspirations. Where do you get your ideas? And I'm not going to be clever and say Poughkeepsie. On I Should Be Writing Season 18, Episode 47. Hi there, welcome to I Should Be Writing. This is the podcast for wannabe fiction writers, and I'm your host, Mer Lafferty. I do the show live on Twitch, Tuesday, Thursday, twitch.tv slash Mighty Mer at 3 o'clock. Usually it's good to put those in a different order. Let's try that again. 3 p.m., Tuesday, Thursdays, Eastern Time, at twitch.tv slash Mighty Mer. That sounds a lot better. You can hear me uh, talk about stuff. You can hear me interact with chat. You can ask your own questions, and it gets to be a little chaotic and a little fun. But I decided to start uh, to ratchet it back and do a little bit more focused podcast. So that's why I'm getting this to you right now, which is just you and me and the recorder. If you don't know me, my name is Mer Lafferty, and I have done this podcast since 2005. And I am a published writer. I've written a Star Wars novelization. I've written a book that got nominated for the Hugo, the Nebula, and the Philip K. Dick Awards. And um, I am the co-editor of Escape Pod magazine. So hopefully I know what I'm talking about, even if all I'm talking about is, man, writing stressful, isn't it? But really what this podcast is designed to do is tell you you're not alone. Whatever problems you're having, whatever anxieties you're feeling, I'll bet you money you're not alone. One of the downsides of doing this uh, clean type of recording <laughs> is that I am doing them back to back. I'm doing both episodes this week back to back, which means I don't have a whole lot of new stuff to uh, mention. I have no, no new good news, no new bad news. And no uh, additions to team rejection. But if you would like to send me your good news or your team rejection numbers, let me know and I will put it in the next podcast. If you're wondering why we're doing team rejection, team rejection is anybody in the audience who wants to tell me they got a story rejected, we're adding it to team rejection. Because when you add to team rejection, you are a working writer. Because it's part of the job. It's not a part of the job we like, but it's a part of the job we celebrate because it's part of the job. People who don't get rejected are usually people who are not submitting and they're not working writers. So this episode's going to be a little bit shorter because I've got a time limit, unfortunately. But uh, I do want to reiterate I joined Focus Mates and I'm having... Uh, it's, I'm doing well with the productivity. I really like it. And I'll put my Focus Mates link in the show notes in case you use it and would like to co do co-working with me. So what I want to talk about today is inspiration. Because a lot of people wonder where writers get their inspirations. And writers usually respond, how do you not have so many ideas you can't focus? And the thing is, you just need to pay attention Pay attention in your life. That is where you get inspiration. To start with, there's people in your life. They're interesting. And you can use them. Don't use their names matching their personalities. Don't use their entire personality exactly how they are and their whole backstory and basically just them. But if you've got somebody with a quirky personality or a stern personality or you've got somebody who's got a unique look about them. Think about where they'd fit in your book. And don't be rude or mean. And if you are rude or mean, make sure you make them much different. Make sure that they are a an inspiration to the character, not the character just on the page. But you can do this when you look at people in your life. Weird conversations that you overhear. Uh, 
if you want one of Lewis Black's most famous bits is the if it weren't for my horse thing when he's which was a story he overheard at IHOP and it just kind of blew his mind because he just did not understand what this phrase meant and the phrase was if it weren't for my horse I wouldn't have spent that year in college look it up online it's very funny I'm sure you can find it but that's the kind of thing you're looking for even if you just overhear, if it weren't for my horse, I wouldn't have spent that year in college. What kind of character says that? It took me a while to get into this, and it's kind of embarrassing. But I was resistant to reading nonfiction because I thought it was boring. Until I found some really good writers who also have had really interesting lives to write really interesting nonfiction. Um, I suggest starting with Mary Roach, who writes science books that are very funny. And um, Ruth Reichel, I can't ever say her name. Reichel, I'll have it in the show notes. She was the New York Times uh, food critic and has written for written written food memoirs for her whole life. She has many memoirs, many stories, and she's just vastly entertaining. You can get a lot of good ideas from there. And oftentimes ideas are like, they're springboarded from what you're experiencing. So uh, I believe I said this to the um, kick in the pants group, the workshop we do, where if you get, say, a, um, if I tell you to write a story about an animal and your, your, your mind process goes, story about an animal. There are animals in the circus. There's also clowns in the circus. And clowns wear makeup. And then suddenly you get an idea about a murder inside a clown makeup factory. That counts. That is what you're inspired to write by the tell me a story about an animal prompt. A lot of times I, I told my husband that I, I did not realize this was a common thing with writers, but I told my husband sometimes I need to talk through a plot problem with him and he could give me advice, and it might be good advice, but oftentimes it's just talking about the problem itself that helps, that unsticks it in your mind. I believe programmers call that the rubber duck syndrome, because sometimes they, once they discovered that's the way brains work, they just realize putting a rubber duck on their desk and talking their programming problems through to the rubber duck will often solve it. But I digress. I'm going to go to the um, unpopular part and say, you know, Stephen King and Ray Bradbury are just like, throw your television away. It's garbage. It's absolutely awful. It melts your brain. Look, to write for television, you need to know how to tell a story. To write for video games, you need to know how to tell a story. You need to know dialogue. There are storytellers who make a living doing this. It's still storytelling. Are you just watching TV and playing video games instead of reading? That's a problem, but don't throw away your television. There's some really good examples of excellently written characters. There's really good examples of plot structure all over video, video games, TV, movies. But when you're watching and when you're playing, just be aware of what's going on. Be aware of what you're doing. Be aware of... Um, the story that's going on. Try to under try to catch like patterns in the plots or patterns in the character development. You know, don't just mindlessly consume. And lastly, I will get to reading. A lot of people say they don't want to read in their um, they don't want to read in their genre because they're worried they're going to be affected. Look, you're going to be affected by every single thing you read in your life. Everything, I promise. And, um, I, I, my first published book was heavily influenced by Hitch Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So much so that I didn't even notice. It was embarrassing. I didn't realize it until, like, a reviewer said it. And luckily, the comparison was positive. But really, I was such a huge Douglas Adams fan in my late teens and 20s that, I was shocked that I didn't see it. So, 
it doesn't matter if you stop reading in your genre once you start writing, because whatever you've read up to this point, or whatever you've seen up to this point, will influence you. That is how stories happen. It's not a bad thing. People like the same but different. This is what it means, the same but different. It means, I want a story I recognize told in a new way. Now granted, that said, I will say that I stopped reading the Expanse series by James S.A. Corey when I was writing Six Wakes. Not because I was worried I would be influenced, but because it made me feel bad about myself because it was so well written. There's a scene, I think, in book two, maybe? Where it tells, you know, Bobby's PTSD from her point of view, but it doesn't reveal it immediately. And from her point of view, she's being bothered and annoyed by this guy checking in on her. And slowly do you realize that he's not the jerk. She's just got severe PTSD and it just unfolds in this brilliant scene. And after I listened, I was listening to that in the car and I'm like, I can't, I can't write like this. And it makes me feel awful. So if that happens, maybe take a break, but don't stop reading and don't avoid stuff in your genre just because you think that you can't, uh, that it will influence you because everything will influence you. Run with it. And that's going to be it for me. I uh, want to thank you for listening. I'll be back next week. Remember, you can watch me live twitch.tv slash mightymer Tuesday, Thursdays at 3 o'clock. And you can support the Patreon at patreon.com slash mightymer. You can pre-order Station Eternity, my new book that comes out in October. You can pre-order it now via Amazon or Barnes & Noble, or your local indie bookstore, or my local indie bookstore, and why would you do that? You would do that because I will sign it and get it to you. And that link will be in the show notes as well. I have, I should be writing merchandise, I have uh, fun things going on over at the Patreon. There's a whole lot of stuff going on with me and I should be writing, so I hope you check it out. If you want to check out the blog and show notes, that's merverse.com. I don't think I had that. Merverse.com. Also in the show notes. Anyway, thank you for listening. I will see you next time. We'll keep up with the basics, and we'll keep learning, and we'll keep reminding ourselves, because you should be writing. I Should Be Writing It's available to you under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives License. Theme music by John Anilio, art by Numbers Ninja, production by Summer Brooks, and hosting by Libsyn. Find all of this information and more at merverse.com. And remember, we can't do this without you. Thanks for your support. Doctor Who. Yeah, I'm sitting home watching Doctor Who.